Yo, what's up? This is Splendid Radio on Fireside TV with my co-host, Jeremy Scipio. What's going on, people? And a very special guest. Return guest. Doing big things. And bigger things than that. Hey, hey. <laughs> he out there in the universe, man. Come on, come on. You know what I'm saying? You can't hold him back. <laughs> Mr. Nate Walker. What's up, How man? You doing? How you doing, man? Appreciate y'all having me back. I can't lie. The first time I came on, I was like, these niggas not finna bring me back on this show. They're like, this nigga <laughs> talk too much. <laughs> nah, we need that. Hey, I'm here for it. I'm here for it. How y'all been, man? Good, good. Shoot, man. Life has been good. Yeah, hey, man. We have another thespian on the uh on on, on this uh in one of these three little boxes <laughs> right oh, here. Yeah. Yeah, that other nigga in Darth Vader's oh. ship, you know, got shot in the neck recently. <laughs> if you haven't gone to see the movie or checked it out, that nigga, that nigga does not make it. And it's rough. <laughs> yeah. It's rough. He made it longer yeah. than I thought he would have made it. I mean, it's listen, it. he teaches you a valuable lesson and is really one of those that our parents have been trying to teach us our whole lives. And that's niggas should not be fucking with white women. And that's really just it. <laughs> Nothing good comes from that. Sir, like, sir, sir, we have children watching. Look. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, no, I'm kidding. You're good. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> like, I was hey, gonna date, say. I was date, gonna say it nice. Date, date who you want to date, but definitely be careful with white women because you'll end up dead. All right. So, <laughs> but uh, yeah, man, I'm glad to have you back. Uh, we want to talk about uh, also your film that's uh, coming out. If you would like to talk about it real quick, man, yeah. Um, so if any of y'all have time, you can go to BT Plus right now. I'm in a film called Paradise, um, and it's a horror film. It's about these people who win a trip to go to Belize, um, and it ends up not being that great of a trip. You know, uh, people start dying, shit gets crazy. Um, you know, you, you got to check it out. I'm not gonna say more than that. <laughs> I'm gonna ruin your movie next. All right, all right. <laughs> I like, but no, nah, we gotta let people watch it first. Yeah, man. Uh, listen, my I, like I I I also don't make it, so we we can talk about that. Oh, yeah, you I, gonna, I don't. I don't gonna make ruin it. it. You gonna go ruin? Why That's you ruin not ruining it? it. Trust me. <laughs> That's not ruining it. That's just matter of fact. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But no, still watch it though. It's 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 a good time, man. It's fun. It's one of those. It's one of those films. Like if it was in the movie theater back in the day, like people would be throwing popcorn at the screen and like yelling at the screen and like talking trash in the theater. Like it's, it's one of those. It's, it's not. It's for sure. Yeah. But it's a good time, man. It's, it's funny. Real real quick over to Jeremy. Um, This yeah. is trivial. But man, I saw you uh, post a picture on Instagram with you and one of the greats, man. Uh, yes. Uh, Robert Townsend. Yeah. Um, OK. OK. Yeah, he was um he yeah that was cool. He's so he's a professor at USC. I did not know that. Um, but yeah, he um he was just having like a little open Q and A dialogue, and uh, he talked about you know Meteor Man and pretty much a bunch of other um uh, you know films and just the concept. I'd say uh, he's a big proponent of doing it yourself, and he's also one of the people that says, "Hey, we have more opportunities than he had back in the day, so we have no excuse." You know what I mean? He said, like, you had to film it on certain type of cameras, but right now you can turn your phone around, boom, you're in the game. Um, what else he said? Uh, oh, well, I'll tell you, uh, I got a chance to talk to him and uh, I got to ask him, a, I got to ask him a question. The question was, um, well, first of all, I was, he actually, I saw him in my neighborhood, like, about a month ago, and <laughs> I drove past, I was like, yo, is that Robert Townsend? So I reversed back and I was like, yo, Robert Townsend. I think I scared the crap out of him. So when I got a chance to talk to him at the q and I was like, oh, man. I was like, um, I said, I had to apologize. I think I scared you when I saw you in my neighborhood. He was like, oh, I remember that. He said, no, I was all right. You know, I was just, you know, because he probably owed people money. That's probably why he was scared. What? But, <laughs> but uh, I, I got to ask him a question. I always wondered um, in Meteor Man, uh, Bill Cosby plays a pivotal role in the movie, but he doesn't say one word. You know, this is oh, Bill damn. Cosby. Yeah. You don't notice it. Yo, I never even thought about that. <laughs> he don't say one word. Nor does uh, Luther Vandross. They don't talk in the movie. Well, we so... ain't need Luther to talk, but like Bill <laughs> not talking is crazy. Uh, so I asked him a question and he kind of evaded the question. I felt like he, I said, um, I said, I wonder, was I said, well, was there an agreement or did he, you know, 
Absolutely. He did say this, though. He said uh, he was very lucky to get Bill Cosby. These were favors. No, and sure. Bill, did a, Bill did the movie for the low, low price of $100 a day. That's dope. That's dope. Yeah. yeah. But he didn't. Yeah. That was his way of answering without answering. Yeah, that's dope. <laughs> Hey man, they had everybody in that movie, man. <laughs> they sure had did. Another yeah. bad creation. They might have had the boys. <laughs> no, they, they had some hitters in there too. Don Cheadle's in there. Like there's there's Not like bad. yeah, they're they're yeah. they're like there are serious real deal like actors in there for sure. You know what I mean? Like he he did a great job pulling that together. Like I definitely respect Robert Townsend and his work. Um and his work ethic, man. Um Okay, so I got a question for y'all because I was thinking about that, right? Because people always say everything, like there's no excuse now because you have every opportunity. You could turn your phone around and make a movie and stuff now. But I think that it's just as challenging. And some people will probably argue maybe more challenging because of how saturated it is with media. Because at the same time, while they could not make a movie with their phone back then, like a movie like Clerks or, or a movie like Blair Witch Project right now might end up on Tubi. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm well, saying? Like, it, dep depends on how many black people in it, but yeah, you're right. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just like a, a movie that doesn't have a certain caliber or a certain budget might end up on Tubi. Like, those movies, like, cool. Like, I just made this movie, like, boom, boom, boom. And it's like, because they didn't know they were finna make $100 million on fucking Blair Witch Project, right? Because they made that shit with That's a right. handicap. So, like, yeah, think yeah. about it. Like, if you go make that and then Tubi right now is like, yo, I'll give you 300000 200000 they take that. That's just on Tubi. It might yeah. not even become the success it is because it's so saturated because the road to trying to get a deal to where like you're even in all those theaters, you either have to go be super successful in the festival route or you have to have you have to have a sales agent or a producer who can sell your projects to one of the networks or the streamers so they can distribute for you. Um, it, and that's yeah, I think that's hard to do. Yeah, I mean, um, we see a lot of power shifting. I'm not putting the blame on anybody, um, but it's just kind of like, you know, it's 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 part of the culture, you know, like um, I would say, you know, you have to have influences and the 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 um, advertisers, they kind of know who to go for, you know, like it's, we were watching it shift. So I say, you know, let's just say if we start from 2010 where social media is at, where it was at then versus now, you know, it was laughable to see like, um, to say we're going to see like social media people be like uh, superstars, you know what I mean? Right. I think we're right. we're walk we're walking into the era. We're not quite there yet, but soon you'll start to see these people with these big followings because it's an actual number, whether it's rigged or not. It's an actual number representing, you know, it's it's quantifiable on their influence. You know what I mean? That's interesting. And and since the advertisers say okay we can make a better bet on these people because they're going to get a return off of it you know it's kind of shifting the balance where you know even even though the power wasn't necessarily in the agents or the managers and all that stuff even they kind of submit into it they're not they were competing against them now they're submitting to it like i'd rather have somebody with some followers on my roster because we're going to get a return back so yeah it's at the end of the day it's oversaturation uh so you know it is debatable on whether it's easier or not that's kind of an elitist thing to say for him, maybe. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, but, yeah, it's like there's more people who have a million followers than ever. There was a time where if you had a million followers, you were rare. It's no, for sure. For I'll take it a step further. I think that superstardom in the way that it used to be is, is going away. Uh, what do you mean? Like in the 90s, how Will and Denzel were, we're not going to have that anymore. Well, you know yeah. what I mean? Because it's so blended, right? Because like, OK, cool. Like we have a lot of these like influencers who have millions of followers. And it's like, I don't know who the fuck they are. You don't know who the fuck they are. Right. Mm -hmm. But there's four million people who know who the fuck they are. But like how many people in the nation? So it's like it's relative. But in the past, when you had that amount of success, it wasn't just a niche community. It was because of certain things that everybody tuned into that gave you that celebrity. Like movie channels. There was like one movie channel back in the day, right? Now we got like six streams, right? Like you remember when it was just HBO, maybe Stars, and that was it. Or HBO, maybe Cinemax. Then Cinemax it was like, boom, now it was like 25 streamers that all have their own exclusive deals. 
So I think like back in the day, like if you were on a show on Fox when there was only 50 channels on cable, that was a big deal, nigga, because like there's only a certain amount of things to watch. It's kind of like with music, right? It's hard to keep up. Like, like you can't keep up. Like you can't keep up. Nothing sticks to you anymore because there's so much shit dropping. If you want to keep up with new shit, if you want to keep up with like fresh shit, if you want to keep up with like certain elements of hip hop that you're looking for, people who relate to you, it's hard to keep up because there's so much. Um, but there's things that break through. That was advocate. Yeah, you know no, for like, sure. There's there's, 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 I mean, I think there's always going to be things that break through and people who are hot for the moment, right? You're always going to have, like, I mean, who would you say is the hottest actor right now? Ooh, Will Smith. It's Michael C- B. Jordan. Yeah. But I don't think it's Michael B. That's what I'm saying. No. I think he has, he, like, his he moments. Cool, he, cool, he, cool, he cooled off. Yeah. He cooled but, off. like, the niggas who are still those John, niggas John, are still- majors. Jonathan right. Majors. No, 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 but Will but Smith. he but no, Jonathan Majors is like one of the best out right now, but he's not what Will and Denzel were in the 90s. Yeah, no. Nah, and he'll nah. never he, be that. He nah. well, he he how he was about to be. This this I was that so. year. I don't think so. What? I don't think he was so. He was everything. He was listen, listen, as you know, acting is my first thing. Him and Lakeith, those are those niggas to me right now. Them two? Yeah. They they got it. They got the juice. They yeah. I don't think they can reach the celebrity of Will and Denzel because it doesn't work like that no more. So what about... He uh, what's his, what's... got into trouble. I think he was about to do... What about Lakeith? Yeah. Lakeith ain't getting in trouble. Yes, he, yeah, he, 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 wasn't, he wasn't that guy. I don't know what he got in trouble for. Though. No, 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 no. Lakeith, <laughs> no, Lakeith... Lakeith, Lakeith, who, 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 Lakeith what? what are you he, talking about? No, he, he Lakeith, dope. He dope. But he got into some trouble. He did get into some trouble. Lakeith got into trouble? Yes, he did. He in trouble? We'll, we'll talk about that. Oh, okay. be, oh no, don't be scared. Talk, talk to me. What happened? No, no, no. He, 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 oh, go ahead. Oh, okay. Oh, no, no, no. Okay. So, well, one, he had a side relationship situation and they kind of smutted him for that. And then, two, he got into it with the Breakfast Club people. That's and then he, uh, that's, it's not real trouble. That's not dirt. That'll, that'll help you, honestly. Like, if, that's like, if dirt. I start getting some buzz, I might talk shit to Charlemagne just to get my, my name out there. You know what I mean? Like, and, and also smashing, was, and then he Go was ahead. accused of being faded and just kind of going off and saying some stuff. That that's was true. Crazy. That's true too. But that's not that's not dirt. But that's that's true. Yeah, he. he that's crazy, man. You guys make me feel good, man. My bar for smut is very, <laughs> it's yeah. very low. Yeah. I would say first your brand. It, it depends on your brand because if your brand is like a squeaky clean, like that was like that was like what got Kevin Hart in trouble because Kevin Hart was all about. <laughs> You know, like he was an instructional guy. He said, you need to live like me. I'm showing you how to live. And then he made, he put so much emphasis on his wife and him be, her being his rib right. and how you should treat your wife. And then he cheated. If he was right. a, if he was somebody who just slept around on a regular basis, but there's you no know way what? it would have hurt his brand. I might actually have to take it back. Well, I don't take back what I said, but The Rock and Kevin Hart were the last niggas that was going to be like planets like that. They, they they are. I mean, yeah. no, no. I'm saying, I'm saying they're that they're the last that I think are going to get that big. Oh, we, we we'll see. I I believe I believe in the future. But well, obviously, I, I, like as far as far as like acting, like we would not compare them to Will and Denzel. Not yeah. I I really think you have to have a different uh, skill set. So I understand what you mean by Jonathan Majors, but like let's just say if he was um you know had a comedic side to him then he could have been like that. So it would take somebody who has more of a comedic side. Um, what's the name? Lakeith is more of a, a, a artist, mm-hmm. almost thespian. So he'll never, he'll always be niche. I don't care how popular he get. That's like Andre 3000, Frank Ocean, you know, those don't, type of guys. Don't, don't talk bad about Andre. We, we, we go in there. We go in there. But in a don't, second, don't, uh, don't. we go in there. We go in there. But yeah, I'm just saying that, you know, there's always those weird method actor types and musician types you know, that, you know, you kind of, they just get a pass for whatever they do, but nobody takes them seriously. And the Keith, the Keith is that guy. You know what I'm saying? Like, no, 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 I don't care what he says. He could say Black Lives Matter. They'd be like, yeah, good. <laughs> so, Nate, I, I got a question for you. What's up? Um, you are pretty well-rounded. You do your acting thing. You do your, uh, co- your comedy thing. And then um, the way you kind of hopped into the music conversation, I was like, okay, he listens to some music. At least he attempts to. But but once again, we're all inundated with so much content now. Like, man, like three year, three third graders are content creators. Like everybody is all about. Lot, yeah. Especially TikTok just made it like, you know, that just a took lot. it. 
man, you could raise your finger up and, and that's a tick. That's it's, a tick. I mean, it's a whole different lane. Like, pe- yeah. like people are like breaking hits because of like a TikTok trend. You know what I mean? Like it's a whole different thing over there. So with, with that being said, what's your favorite medium to consume music? So like you're, you know, music? yeah, you're not as old as, as I am. I, I take it you're a little older than Jeremy. But like for you, when you want to listen to some music or find what's the new joint, like you're like how you were saying, you know, you you look for music and you try to see what you yeah. can kind of identify with. Um, it would probably be like I do like Spotify, like I'll click around inside of Spotify. I'll see like what's new. Like I'll go look through the playlist and if there's new names in there, I'll see who they are. If there's different things like that that are trending. Um, I don't really like hit the music blogs or like like go to the magazines or like the web pages now and check out like what's going on. So like I follow certain accounts like like um was it like sleeping on gems? I think oh, is man. one of the ones yeah, that I like on, on Instagram. Yeah. Like so there are accounts like that that will like post random music. So if there's an artist that I haven't heard, like they'll probably hit that and then I'll go dig into them, see what's up with that. Um and then really it's just like, you know, having friends who listen to music, they'll like they'll put you on. Sometimes you're just chilling with people that be like, yo, have you seen this video? Have you, you know what I mean? Like that type of stuff. I still like all of that. So Spotify is probably like what I listen to music the most in, but um, I still find out about things in a lot of different ways. Um, sometimes I'm watching a what well, sometimes I'm watching a show. You know what I mean? Like um sometimes I'm watching a show and like a song will come on and it'll either get me back on an artist that I already knew of or like make me like listen to somebody who's new who got like a music placement. You know what I mean? Like, I, I remember, I remember, I think it was, a, he got a placement, Steve Lacey got a placement on um, Issa Rae's Insecure on mm-hmm. one of them shows, right? And it stood out to me. Now, I've been listening to the internet forever, you know what I mean? And I had listened to a Steve Lacey project like years ago, but when I heard that, I'm like, yo, who was that? And I was like, oh, that's Steve Lacey, oh, that's old boy. And it made me dig into his shit and like see where he was at like currently. So it's just like, any anytime like some music can get to you and you can like receive it, I, I think that's dope. And so- that's that's really how I try to get it. You know who's dope, but uh, kind of slept on a little. Well, he's not slept on. He he's kind of stepped away, maybe from the the limelight. Um, he's with Holly Berry right now. Van Hunt. Van okay. Hunt, check him out. Okay. Listen to some yeah. of Van Hunt's earlier music. His first okay. two albums. Um, he's a very talented cat, man. He okay. was like um. Prince with more blues than rock and roll to it, kind of, but like, uh, like, like on some balladeer Prince stuff. But he had a lot of very vintage sounds, like, like very vintage sounds. Mm. Okay. Uh, quick question. Um, so, um, if Spotify is your main, um, you know, place to consume music. Um, do you think you would feel differently about them? I heard they're having some uh, realty policy updates and um uh, uh if a lot of artists are having a problem with um how they're planning on changing the policy or whatever i was wondering if you're the type of person that you would like consider a di- alternative place to consume your music if uh like majority of artists have a problem yeah, with something like if, if, if that hits the fan like i understand like i'm an artist so like i i respect the artists and i want them to get paid their worth and they they're not getting shit off of streaming you know what i mean like that's very public you know, information at this point that they're really not making any money off of streaming. Um, you know, if, if they don't have like a deal to you know, like a lot of them are just making their money from like touring and stuff, you know, it's because mm-hmm. it's not like you sell records anymore and like get a piece off of your record sales. So mm-hmm. I, I'm here for it. I think, you know, it's hard because obviously SAG and the Writers Guild, we're going through this now to where like the world has changed and the way that money is earned for the for the art that we provide to the world is different. So like the pay structure needs to change and like the music niggas definitely need to figure something out, but they've always been getting robbed. You know what I mean? Like that's nothing new for the music niggas. Like every, every biopic about a nigga who does music is about that nigga not making no money for 25 years. You look at the mm-hmm. fucking, you look, you know what I'm saying? Like you, you, mm-hmm. you they, like all of them, it's, that's what it's about is them going in, signing some deal and all their money going to this company. And then they're signing this company and that company has like a shopping deal with RCA or universal. It's not even a real, you know what I mean? Like they don't even know they're in real deals. So now they're just getting robbed in a different way. Um, and it's tough. Like 
I don't know if they need to unionize. I don't know exactly what their plan needs to be, but I respect their plan. However, they figure out how they want to try to get it done. Um, So however that works out, like I would say, just pull it. You know what I mean? Like I'll probably use Spotify right now. I use that because it's the most convenient for me to use. Now, if they go to those people and say, yo, pull all my shit, pull all my shit. And all of them put their music in a different place. Then I will probably go to that place. But while it's right there on Spotify, I'm probably going to use that. Like, unfortunately, that's kind of just the way that it is. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But it's so, like, it, it sucks because I know enough to know that so many of them don't have control of this shit. So it's like, I don't know. I would I would have to really, once they get in the weeds with that, like, I'll probably like try to do some research and figure out what's going on at that time. Because I do know a lot of them don't have, you know, a lot of them don't own their masters. So they don't get to say, yeah, take my shit down. It's, and niggas ain't your shit. I own this, nigga. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. like. <laughs> Yeah. So uh, <clears throat> this conversation is probably going to take up the rest of the podcast. So I apologize in advance. <laughs> it's um, okay. yeah. So um, your boy Andrew three thousand uh, is planning. He just did an interview recently where he and he should have known this is going to make major news. Uh, he did an interview uh, for NPR Music where he discussed dropping a new album called Blue New New Blue Sun. Uh, I never seen a blue sun, but whatever. Um, <laughs> not doing the right drugs. <laughs> uh, man, um, people, this has been 17 years since uh, the faded outcast, um, Love Below, uh, what's it called? Uh, Speaker Boss Love Below right. dropped, mm-hmm. yeah, and it literally just announced that it uh crossed over 100 million records sold. And to honor this being the highest selling, stop <laughs> one time, stop. he decided to drop. A brand new record called Blue New, new Blue Sun for his fans that features no bars, no beats, no sub bass. Uh, Andre just, he doesn't want to sing on his joint. He just wants to play the flute, <laughs> the bass, bamboo flutes, digital wind record <laughs> instruments. Um, and he even said, he goes, the irony is, I swear I really wanted to make a rap album, but this is literally the way the wind blew me this time. I was wondering uh, for the avid, because um, I'm more of a big boy guy, honestly. Um, big fan. Big boy's nice. I, I respect that. He's, he's, he's wrong, he's, but it's nice. He's the better. He's he's the better I half. See, of, uh, I knew you were. That's but, absolutely um, not. Look, look, it's not. It's here or there. It's here or there. It's here or there. He's, he he actually makes new music. Um, so I, I, sure. I wanted to hear. I wanted to hear your thoughts. On I'll be anybody. on that crypt tonight. Straight up on that crypt tonight. Yeah, he still drops albums, but anyway, I just want to yeah. say, what are your thoughts? On Andre's deal. and I feel like you know how I feel about this, but you want me to tell these people I'm I'm not happy. Okay, listen to everybody listening. Um, I, I've told Jeremy Andre three thousand was my favorite rapper, um, and so it hurts, right? And like he he <laughs> like because like they keep teasing you like oh Outkast might drop an album this year yo they come in and it's it's never gonna happen. So I don't listen to that shit anymore. So when an actual album was coming out and I was like nigga. Yes, finally, right? And I went and looked it up, and it's this nigga playing with wind chimes. I wasn't happy. I wasn't happy. Um, wind chimes. And for a while, I respected it because I do understand what he's saying, right? Like, I do think that it takes a certain type of artist to still be good once you get to a certain age, right? Like, we're seeing Hove and Nas do it pretty flawlessly. We are seeing mm-hmm. T.I. not do it so great. We are seeing, <laughs> That's funny. you know what I'm saying? Like you're yeah. seeing certain people not connect in the same way. Jeezy, I know a lot of people who like Jeezy's new project. A lot of people who are just like, I ah, just, you know, I'm good on it. You know what I mean? Like certain certain people find a way to do it and certain people do not. I think that he could, right? Um, Killer Mike's album was one of my favorite albums of the year. Might be my favorite album of the year, to be quite honest. Oh, I think he oh, ate for Grammy. Oh, and for then Grammy. He, he deserves it. And then... Mm-hmm. The couple of like Dre, I think in the last year and a half, dropped two verses. One was some mid and one's fucking fire, right? Scientists and engineers on the album that yeah, we're talking about uh, on yeah, Killer Mike shit. Yeah, Killer Mike, yeah. And then um was it the Goody Mob who dropped the album? No, not Goody Mob. The other the other niggas from um I'll try to find it, but oh, I got oh, anyway. He dropped another verse. That verse was like, okay, you're not there. And so, like, since I listened to, like, all of his interviews, I've heard what he said. He feels like he doesn't, he feels like he's out of touch. He feels like hip-hop is a young man's game because it is about, like, that internal struggle and, like, 
how you relate to the world and how you're seeing the world. And he feels like there is more to give when you're experiencing that for the first time. He was like, there's not as much a way to relate after you have made it and become successful. And we see that with a lot of people. That's why I still stand by my theory that most rappers, their best album is within their first three albums. Um, And so I was with them. But after I had that verse on scientists and engineers, I need an album out this nigga. Fuck it. I'll just say, hey, Andre, if you listen to this, you need to rap again, bro. Give me, I don't even got an album. Give me an EP. Give me five. Give me five of them things. And you know Get what really up. makes me mad is I know that music's out Get there, but up. he will not release it. And I hate it. I know he got a Get thousand up. songs that we've never heard. Your like at goat. this point, I'm ready to just run up into his shit. I'm about to call Badu and be like, look, come on, just let's let's do this right quick. Let's go get this nigga. Cause I need it, bro. Nate, I'm upset. Face it. I'm, I'm not happy. The goat is trash. Your goat is trash. That's the, say, say it with me. Your goat is trash. No, I will never is, say that. I'll never. Your goat say is that. trash, bro. He don't. He don't supply you with music, man. That's he don't true. even care about that is you. True. That is he true. He don't love you. You know that where he's true. at? He's in the park right now with a flute, standing on a slide. That's where he's at right now. That's how he feels about you, man. <laughs> he don't care. <laughs> he knows. He knows what you want. He's known for seventeen years. If you want new Andre three thousand music, ask Kanye. I think it's the setup. <laughs> I think he's gonna drop this album that he wants to drop. You you're out of your mind, sir. No 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 no. As a three K, bro, bro. As a three K fan, is not coming. It's the mom. And I'm I'm also more mad at myself for falling for it again. It's your goat, man. I think oh. it's the model. I, I think I think I think the model, uh, Chappelle's done it. Many of the greats have done it. They 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 hold off, they do their they, they get someone to let them do their thing, and then they do their thing, and then they come back and give the people what the people want, but they get theirs off though. 17 years, absolutely not. Ray, if Eddie comes back, maybe. If yeah, Eddie comes not- back, maybe. That's it. That's I think it. he. I think it'll be one of those things where we'll get a verse every two or three years with people he fucks with. Like Kendrick Lamar might be able to get a verse. J. Cole might be able to get him to do a verse. Like we'll get that, and he's gonna eat, and it's only gonna make us mad. All right, I'm but like you. what Andre seems a lot more like the artist who, when he dies, he just like then he'll let us have everything. I'll I'll set I'll, okay I'll I'll set the uh first viral splendid uh radio snipe. Let's go. There's gonna be an outcast record. No, no. A, a whole album or a song? No, there's gonna be a record. When you say record, oh, you, oh, so, oh you mean song? He means song. A one song. Him, 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 and Big Boy coming back together to collaborate to do an album. Multiple, multiple works. I can tell you why. I'll tell you why not. It's not. It's not real, bro. Because, <laughs> because Andre ain't gonna show up for the show. He ain't gonna perform. What's I'm the not talking out? about a show. I'm I know, talking but about I'm right saying... now. I'm talking about right now. The man has been driving Porsches for in better forever. He's done everything he could do. I I feel like if he gets this album off, his like what he wants to put out there, then he'll he'll probably be like, man, okay, I didn't got mine off. You know what I'm saying? I didn't got mine off. I thought well, he I'm... was doing that when he made. Love below, and and he made a cartoon at the time where he was singing, and he, he said it then. He was like, All I and, and in the Idlewild album, he didn't rap on that, all he did was sing on that. So I thought he was going through a phase then, and that was like four projects when he was like, Yo, I'm I just all that's coming to me right now is melodies and tunes. So if all that's coming to that nigga right now is these wind chimes, and y'all go buy that shit, the next one's gonna be trumpets. I, I just I, want you guys to go. I just want you guys to know because I, I just want like the love below. Because we're not gonna count out a while. The speaker box love below. They read it together. I hate when people try to separate them. I'm sorry. This dude has released zero albums. I just want to make that clear. Um, <laughs> uh, the speaker box love below came out in September 2003. Thank so you. you're comparing a man who's releasing music, whatever he was thinking 20 years ago. Does not apply today. Just don't work, bro. It's over, man. It's over. He's knocked out. I'm personally looking forward to Big Boy's next next record more. 
Can't wait. I love Big Boy. He's I like I, I like Big Boy a lot. I love Big Boy too. I really do. Better than Andre. Better than Andre. No, I, I definitely no, he, no. he releases records on a regular basis. He's a great musician. I love him. So Listen, great. I respect you for that to be like, yo, I fuck with him more, but to say that I like him more. No. But he's fire though. He's always been fire. He's always been great. And I, I feel like it's been unfortunate. I feel like he hasn't gotten the shine that he should get because of how different Dre was in his prime. Yeah, I mean, I'm just, I'm saying, I, I like Speaker Box more than Love Below and everything too. Yeah, I just, I, I can, I can respect that. That I can respect for sure. I can respect that. Yeah, hundred three thousand. I don't think he belongs in the goat conversation, honestly. Um, body of work, definitely not. Yeah, thank you. Oh, body of work, you. definitely not. You're, no, I, you're, taking, honest, the, you're taking the no. fun out of this. You're taking the fun out of this. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, no, because I'm <laughs> like, like you got, you got to tell me something I, I, I disagree with, then I'll fight you. But I'm like, no, I agree because body of work, like I, I just can't say that. How, how I'm gonna put him up against hope? Right. I can't. That nigga's still dropping albums. You know what I'm yes. saying? Like I can't. Yeah. I can't put it. I can't put it up against his sales. I can't put it up against like what, like in the last 15 years what he's like done as far as like you know what I mean. So I can't put him up against that. Now when I just talk about like if you just want to talk about like who I think is like yo the nicest, dopest, most creative like all around like when it comes to like just getting on that mic, I'll fight you on that. But like when you're just talking about everything. You know what I mean? It's, it's, that's like saying like Shaq is better than than Jordan or fucking LeBron. It's like, yo, in Shaq's prime, the most dominant, one of the probably the most dominant thing I've ever seen on a basketball court. If he cared like the rest of them niggas and stayed in shape, might have seven rings. But none of that shit matters at the end of the day. What did he do? And that's where it, that's what it comes down to for a 3K. Andre, Andre 3000 is officially clinically diagnosed with social anxiety and hypersensitivity. He's always had um, that, though. Well, I'm saying this is the guy you want an album from. Because he don't have to be around nobody to make no album. Relax. You know what I'm saying? I, feel I, don't, I don't need him to tour. Yeah, I, I, I'll of, be honest. I don't necessarily of, want to see Andre 3K on a stage right now. Unless he's going to put the shoulder pads and the pants back on and the wigs, then I don't want to see it. It's people like you that won't let Andre 3000 be great. You want too much from him. Be happy with your flute album, okay? I said I'm gonna listen. <laughs> yeah, this is what your goat made. You made a flute album. I got. I'm gonna, I'm gonna support that man. He will get streams out of me for sure. Okay. I got a question <laughs> for you, Nate. What's up? As we move on from uh, from three stacks, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> What's your secret talent? My secret talent? Damn, I don't know. I make a fire steak, my nigga. I'm not going to, I have to concur. Uh, I don't believe in uh, eating under, um, undercooked meat. Oh my God. Still, still mooing. Uh, grow up. Yeah, but I, I've tasted um, a rare steak that he made. Uh, it was the first time I ever ex ingested um, live, uh, li livestock. You, but, uh, you really know good. that well Literally done live. meat. Is from poverty, right? Like you literally that's literally why black people are stuck on well done meat because we were getting the worst parts of the meat and it was old, so we had to cook the shit out of it. Yeah, you see, this is the, the coon side of you. I'm glad you uh that's been, the coon side yeah, of me. Yeah, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You that's the you still eating your steak like, like you a slave, he, nigga. What are you talking like, about? You eat steak like Wayne Brady. Oh my god, <laughs> Wayne Brady got money. <laughs> yeah, that's I can't even say it. You get it. All right, yeah, exactly. <laughs> that nigga pull up on you like he on the Chappelle show. <laughs> you get it. You get it. You get it. But yeah, now, nah, um, I, but I have to. I have to admit, this guy does make a really, really good steak. It was, it was really good. It was really good. I'm trying to think about other secret talent, something I'm good at that people don't know about. That's so, uh, Smooch is a, a, a foodie, man. You gotta you gotta try his uh, steak, man. It's actually no 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 homo, you know. But it's, yeah. you gotta try it. It's pretty good. Yeah, for sure, for sure, no homo. We, we um, ain't eat nothing that's red, man. We so you eat your I, shit I well done too. How old I'm are y'all? With the pink and the oh, it's just the juices and the, oh, it's just the whatever. I mean, I'll let you know right now, nigga. I'm not finna well done no steak, dog. That's disrespectful and it's a waste of the fucking meat, nigga. I can just buy you some beef jerky. The rarest I get. Is when I smoke a brisket or a tri tip, and I have a nice shade of brown with the red. That's not nose. rare. 
with a red little uh smoke ring around the outer the smoke ring that's not rare bro <laughs> that's not rare <laughs> this smoke ring is the smoke ring that's not rare at all bro if you know, the meat I, is all the way brown, it's not rare at all. Nate is the Stephen A. Smith of uh of steaks. Let's say cooking. I'm telling I you. appreciate steak. I like steak. <laughs> it's one of my favorite food. foods, man. I that lasagna it. and like some pastas. He like the tail still flapping around. No, nah, nah, see, it's not it's not even that, bro. But like you have to try it. Have you ever tried it? Is what I'm asking. Out Laurie's, I've had Laurie's before and prime rib. What are you talking about? No, 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 it's a um, it's a fancy restaurant. Now, like, oh, okay, okay, yeah. okay. See, but it, it, it is that it is that large. It is that large though. But it's yeah, okay, it's okay, okay, okay. Laurie's they they yeah, make fine. the prime rib pink, you know, pink. But they give you a bunch of garlic mashed potatoes and uh, yeah. a bunch of carbs and all that kind of stuff. To but is the steak good though? Yeah, I mean, uh, it wasn't my thing, but it was enough people there that it was their thing that I'm not going to disrespect it. You know what I'm saying? It's, yeah. I'd have to taste it. I don't know. I can't, you know what I'm saying? I can't judge that. But prime, prime um, rib is made, prime rib is very, made very similar. So I can send a comparison. I've always avoided it my whole life. I've tasted it one time. I was like, oh, my credit score isn't high enough to taste this. Uh, but, you know, like I said, I, I will say, because I sat there and talked shit to this man while he was making it the whole time. And I tasted it and it, it was it was good. So the whole the whole two and a half minutes it took him to cook it. <laughs> right. To, 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 to move it, to move it around the pan. <laughs> Yo, bro, y'all gotta y'all gotta stop being scared of new stuff, man. That's what's wrong with black people, dog. Like <laughs> hey, hey, hey. that's what's wrong with black people. You wanna know the people in my family who don't eat medium rare or like medium? Okay. They're all over 55. Oh, I thought you were gonna say. The, no, they're all over 55. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> like that, that well done shit is like you just don't know any better. Like because you haven't had it. It's like a nigga who still only eats all soul food. Nigga, we know that shit's fucking terrible for us now. Nigga, stop eating that shit. Wonder why you're dying from cholesterol and high blood pressure, nigga. That's just bad for you. So question, Dang, real quick. Eat. And then we move. So real quick, we'll move on. I just really want to know. Is you just telling me eating rare meat is healthier than eating cooked meat? Just just professional no i don't i don't think that's actually a health benefit I think okay just making sure no i think that it like for one like if you have if you have a steak that's overcooked it is harder to chew and it takes longer and it's not as juicy so that definitely changes flavor profile mm -hmm. well you know I, I think morally it's harder for me to eat morally yeah, because it's still alive and making money. morally but, is, uh, the word, yeah. is the word is the word morally Let's, let's, let's move on. That steak deserved <laughs> to get cooked well done, nigga. He he said it was in his will. He wanted he wanted to get he wanted to get cremated. And you know you know cremated cremated. That's the word of the day. Yo, <laughs> I'm glad we got Stephen A. Smith here today. This is great. Oh man, <laughs> um, this is great. So, question: um, Do you prefer writing, comedy, or acting? Acting. Acting. Not even the no, no, not even, not even a thing. Um, I still get he knows I still get a ton of anxiety every time I do comedy because I don't do it enough. Um, oh, so you're under 3,000 of comedy, got it? No, because he's <laughs> he's because he's actually great at comedy, but at, at music, and I don't think I'm great at comedy. Um, so I can't, I can't give him that. But if you're talking about like as far as like how often I do it, yeah, we about the same. Like, I don't, I don't do it often. Like, he knows, like, sometimes like I'm like I'm in my zone and I'm like going up and I'm doing things. Um, but acting for sure is my first thing. And writing is just hard and frustrating, bro. Um, it is not my favorite thing to do. It is one of the things that I do because, you know, God bless me with the ability to, like, understand how to, like, get it done in a way that it works. But I have friends who are, like, real writers to where they are, like, writers. And it doesn't come to me like that. I think, mm -hmm. I think my gift um, in life was, like, probably being an entertainer, being a talker. Um, mm -hmm. And and that plays into me acting. Um, the rest of it, you know, I think there's a level of intellect. I think there's a level of like reading people and understanding people that translates into the other two things. Um, but your writing's hard, bro. Like hard, it's it's hard to do that well. Um, and having been a part of like good scripts and bad scripts and been on big shows and like just my friends trying to do some little indie shit to do that well is difficult. And 
because I want to hold myself to a certain standard, it is a challenging thing to do. I got a question on the comedy side of it. Uh, I do not want you to name who the person was. I just want the experience. It was Jeremy, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I just do this funny, man. <laughs> uh, the worst comedic experience you've ever witnessed and what made it horrible? Man, I don't necessarily know if I have a worst. Um, what I will say is when I first moved to L.A., going to open mics is an experience um, because you see people who are talented and you see people who are really like, yo, this... This one probably ain't for you. You 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 look like the nigga who like, like you know the nigga who couldn't hoop, but his mom used to keep signing him up for the fucking team. With Jordan, some, yeah, like some people look like that, and so it's just like there is, you know, you know how like you can like feel somebody's embarrassment. What's that? What's that term called? Like when like when somebody like when somebody else is like should be embarrassed, and like you feel embarrassed for them, like empathy, sympathy, something something like that. You know what I mean? Like. Like getting that while somebody else is on stage just bombing is tough. Like it's cringy and it's it's a it's a very, very uncomfortable place to be. And like sometimes it can be funny, like laughing to their detriment, but like sometimes it's just really like it's uncomfortable a bit. Like you Jeremy, you've been in a room with somebody's bombing. That shit can be uncomfortable. it gets uncomfortable for the crowd too, nigga. Like we're all like like I want this shit to stop, nigga. And then they keep going because they they gotta try to they gotta fill up the fucking time. And you're just like, oh, like it's just it's like is 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 gross. So like anytime seeing that to where it's like somebody who's really not good. Um, oh man, I like I just thought of a friend. I I just thought of a friend, Jeremy. You know this nigga too. I'm gonna tell you after the show. I remember seeing him bomb at at the improv, and it hurt me. Um, I know you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's tough, man. Always seeing that is tough. But it, you know, shit. Like I, I bombed, so I, I'm sure somebody felt that way about me at some point. But that's that's always a, that's always a tough thing. But my, the, my my like my time. Okay, that one was probably the worst because I knew the person, so I felt more connected to their bombing experience. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's just, bro, it's just it's just ugly, dog. It's ugly. Like when a you nigga's dying on stage, that shit is ugly. Like, I understand why people used to throw tomatoes back in the days. It's like, get the fuck out of there, dog. Like, end it. Please stop. Let's, like, it hurts. It hurts. You know, one that I saw that um, he wasn't a whack comedian, but it, he just had somebody that was just better than him, and it reduced him down to this. To, to uh, yeah. he It reduced him from a full suit to gravy. <laughs> it broke him down. I believe uh, it. I mean, that's it. it's it's a treacherous game out there. Like, I'm not all the way in it, but yeah, like niggas who headline and don't be trying to take niggas who funnier than them with them. Like, Damon Williams. Damon Williams was the opening with, with Jamie Foxx at the Rose at the Shack Rose. Oh, oh. man. Mm. Oh, oh I, thought no, you, no. I thought you was going to talk no, about no, that. No. Jamie roasted old boy while he was. That's what you're talking about. Yeah, that's, the, oh. that's that wasn't that wasn't Damon that's Williams. Not, that's not Damon Williams. Damon Williams oh. was the ball head. Like no, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, don't he do that. He used to be on Comic View a lot. Damon Williams was yeah. funny. Yeah, yeah Damon Williams. What, what was homeboy's name? It wasn't Damon. Uh, oh. No, no, no. Uh, I can get it. Damn, what was his name? All I, know, I, it wasn't. It wasn't even. I'll tell you, this is this is the funny thing. It actually was not the Shack roast. It was Emmett Till's roast. Oh, it sure was. It was just Smith. 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 That's right. No, Emmett Smith. Emmett Smith. God Emmett Smith. damn. Sorry. sorry, sorry. Emmett Smith. You, they roasted Emmett Till, nigga? I know, I know. I know. Right. I caught it as soon as I said it, too. I was like, yo, Emmett Smith roast. Yeah. Emmett Smith what would, roast. What would be yeah. the first joke in the Emmett Till roast? I'm moving oh, on from horrible, that, sir. That's man. That's uh, it's, it's, it's Doug Williams. Doug, Doug Williams. Williams. Yeah. No, Doug had a bad day, man. And it, it, you know what sucks? Is it? It wasn't even the roast or the situation because they had actually already put in the past and made up after that happened. What sucks is YouTube being new and whatever videos were like you know, uploaded in its infancy are like the biggest videos of all time, and that just happens to be one of them. So he had to relive. It's like if you had a wound and you healed from the wound and you got over it, 
And then somebody just came with an axe and just sliced that thing open. And now that's what you're more known for, more than your career, more than more than the moment <laughs> that video. It was like to, to me, it was like watching somebody box somebody and they're just totally outmatched with skill, like a like a technical boxer in a ring. You got Mike Tyson in the ring, and you just <laughs> and you got uh Logan it, Paul. It, it, or that's exactly Paul. what it was. That's exactly what it was. Yeah. That's why it's tough yeah. to watch because it's it's like it, basically in that scenario, like Jamie was being a bully. It's like nigga, come on, yeah, like, get all yeah. like get all this nigga back, dog. Like get all the you know. What sucks is that it is a roast, <laughs> and he told Jamie told him that. He, you know, I've just seen this interview like so many times, whatever. Uh, he told him, like, hey, man, throw whatever. I can take it, bro. It's not a big deal. You know what I mean? Just like I said it just then, Jamie said it to him. So he was thinking, like, oh, man, he cool. So he took a couple of low blows in Jamie's eyes. Uh, Jamie, you know, talking about his career. You know what I mean? Because yeah. at the time, this wasn't box office Jamie, this was like, but it was still, no, it was, was still a, leading yeah. man Jamie. That's yeah. why he, no, no, it wasn't, it wasn't. What bro. He, he was he he had just did Ali. He had he just did Ali. Still, no, no, but I'm still, saying before then, no. remember he was like, it's a good thing. It's a good thing you had which McCall. It was a movie he was the lead in. Yeah. He was like, like he was like, oh three strikes. But um, no, he, Jamie wasn't in three strikes. Jamie no, no, had was, um it was, was some that type of movie. They though. put the radio inside of his shit and they were tracking him, the government. Hmm. Yeah, we we're gonna be doing this forever. We're gonna do this forever. Got the Google. Uh, yeah, but the thing is with Jamie, Jamie was he was doing the B tier black movies before that pop. You know what I mean? He he was you're right, he's a leading man though, because he had booty call and other Bro, stuff. Too. I was gonna say he had but, booty call, he had held up, which were black yeah, movies. Yeah, held up. Held up, I'm that's what I'm about. saying. That's a that's a B black movie. That's no, a but B the black one movie. I'm held talking up. about wasn't a black movie though. But but I'm saying that that's why you could tell you we can't act like that didn't affect Jamie emotionally. Like I don't he was think trying it to did. I think yeah, Jamie got, was just yeah. I think Doug was bombing. Yeah, and Jamie was. felt like the show was suffering, so Somewhere. Jamie got on his ass. He didn't have to do that. No, he didn't. He didn't that's why it was a that's choice. Why you feel bad because, it was like, choice. it wasn't that he had to do it. That nigga didn't say anything per, nah, to provoke Jamie he... to me. Jamie was literally bored because Doug was doing a bad job. No offense, <laughs> it wasn't a good set. Yeah. You know he what I'm saying? He wasn't. Yeah, he, he was losing. Roasted. At that point, you know what I'm saying? Everybody's bomb. He was bombing, and then so Jamie was just like, "I just told a joke that didn't go over again." I should put up. You know what I mean? Like, which he is was such just, a creative he, way to come at it too. He didn't bro, just go yeah. like, "Oh, look at your so face." So it's like he he didn't do anything like that. And then and then and then what's her face was like, "Get him, Della, get him, Monique." And no, that's what that's what, that's what that's some that's shit. To, and then he says some shit to Jamie, and then it was like, "Nigga, why?" Oh, did actually, okay, I do remember this too. This is another part of the interview. I think Jamie Foxx said what he what he didn't like was he was doing his set instead of like mm. doing original roast jokes. Oh, instead of roasting, he was yeah. I'm telling like you, he said, because it said, he said, oh, Monique, he said, uh, I know people say you got uh, big, you big boned it. He said, you got regular bones with big, big meat wrapped around them. And, you know, everybody was like fake laughing and stuff, you know, but that's Bro, like a at the joke. time that that so happened, he, Bait is the movie that I'm talking about. It's called Bait. Bait. Yeah, Bait. That's but the year he, before that, he had done any given Sunday. What are we talking about? Was that, this is was that Jamie okay. Fox. He was, he was, that was still on the come up though. But yeah, I, I get Any it. given yeah. Sunday? That that was the beginning of the trajectory for sure. Al Pacino in it. I get 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 it. I just feel like he wasn't who he is now. He didn't have an Oscar yet. You know what I'm saying? I, that, well, that's okay. I'm just saying, you know, like, all right, all right. You know, comparatively, you fine, know, fine. He, but, but you know, because I, I don't think that Jamie he was, was that nigga. Good. But to me, I feel like at that time, Jamie was already that nigga. He had already done a living color, which already put everybody who's on the living color was already set. You know what I mean? As far as respect in the comedy world. Right. And then you you have the booty calls, you have toys, you have the great white hype. Even even Player, even that. players club held up. Even any given Sunday. Thing. He got his ass whooped in any given Sunday. I'm trying to tell you. He, but he was the lead in any given Sunday. He, he was he was the lead in a movie with Al Pacino, Cameron Diaz, um, fucking LL Cool J, who was sizzling hot at the time. Like, that, like that's a major cast. That's like, who beat his that. ass. <laughs> that's who beat his ass. <laughs> no, no, for sure. For sure. We didn't know no, that, though. Saying, we didn't know that at the time. I wish Doug had known that so he would have had something to come back with in that fucking roast. I'm just saying, like, okay, 
say like, you know, okay, I don't know. I'll just use myself, for example, right? Like, okay, even though this movie, I mean, it's, it's a it's a decent deal. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's making some some waves or whatever. But if somebody was like, if we doing a roast, I'm thinking you're going to roast me, right? And you're going to be like, oh man, uh, you know, like that nigga got killed in the movie. Like, you know, I hope he's, somebody come and kill him now. He probably about to die in five seconds. I'm gonna feel a little bit about that. I'm like, all right, bro. Like, what you trying to, what you trying to do, bro? Like, you know what I mean, like, like you know what I mean, like, keep it, keep it jokes, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, right, right. at you least I was sensitive? in the movie, nigga. You yeah, well, at least I was in the movie. Where was your movie at, bro? You know what I'm saying? Like, well, exactly. That's ex time. But that's you exactly the, that's the correct comeback, right? That's the correct <laughs> comeback, right? It's like if you big going into an argument with somebody, like. Like, of course, I'm going to call you fat. Like, what are you talking about? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but it's your job to have a fucking comeback for that. If you're going to talk shit while you fat. So, like, if I'm going to talk shit about your movies and I ain't got no movies, that's that's stupid on my part. And again, it's not like these were small movies. <sighs> OK, real quick. All right. All right. Let's move on. Um, I'm going to tell I want to tell uh, uh, the worst uh I think I told it on this podcast before, but probably way a while ago. Um, the worst stand-up experience I witnessed, um, you know, bombing, somebody bombing. Uh, it was a comic on stage. This is a, the club don't even exist anymore. It's called Spotlight Comedy Club. Um, it was a decent night. Like, it wasn't the craziest night, but it was like one table going completely nuts. Everybody else was kind of just laughing. And most comics were going up there just doing a set and going off like, hey, man, you know, I did my part. You know what I mean? It's one of those. Uh, yeah, I had went up already. I, you know, I was like, hey, I did my thing. It was cool, right? We was getting by. Then um, one comment goes up. And uh, like I said, there was a lady who kept talking during people's set, but she was doing what I consider supportive heckling, where she'd be like, when did that happen? You know, you'd be like, yo, so other day, other day, woo! You'd be like, chill, like, let me finish the joke. So this one table going nuts, everybody's chill. Um, this the, the host brings up this comic. As soon as dude gets up there, he's like, yeah, at first he's, he does like his first two jokes. I think he's something about his height. He was short or something like that. And they just didn't really go that well. Then uh, the lady go, oh, yeah, 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 you short king, all that stuff. And then she goes, he goes, um, he goes, hey, he said, hey, bitch, you need to know when to shut, shut the fuck up when a real comedian is on stage. Right? Sucked all the air out of the room. Right? It was like crazy. Um, she goes, because I tell you, the, the magic of what he did was not only did he insult the crowd, he insulted the comedians. And, you know, there's like a camaraderie. Even when people be like beefing against each other, we kind of still connect on the fact that it's just like, you know, like, hey, black man, hey, black man. It's like, that's how comics are. You know what I mean? Like, we all connect. You know what I'm saying? So when you said when a real comedian's on this stage, it was like you saying everybody not a comedian but you right man he messed up the lady she got she stood up she was like it's my birthday and he goes i don't give a fuck right so then she gets up to storm out this other dude go gets up he goes i'm gonna whoop your ass he goes what is that your girl did she, he goes no that's my mom <laughs> <laughs> Yo, all the blood drained from this dude's face. <laughs> the host who had the power to break it up, he was like, "Hey man, I can't wait to see what happens." Dude jumps on that stage, go swing at dude. He chasing around like Tom and Jerry on the stage. <laughs> dude, tell me this: was this in the Inland Empire or something like that? Or no, that like no, this was this was a uh, um. Studio City. Ventura. I heard a story like this before, but dang. Nah, man, that shit was funny. I it, it was like, man, to me, it lasted forever. Like, that felt like that moment lasted an hour. I was cracking. <laughs> no, he said, that's my mom. We, yo, <laughs> we all knew he was going to get his ass whooped. <laughs> I've, I've seen, I've seen, I, I've seen a comedian get mad and call a woman a bitch while he was on stage. That shit is always like, goddamn, how did we get here? <laughs> But some people can pull it off like a Corey or, you know, it depends on if it's part of your thing. I personally don't call no. one of the bitches. Like, yeah, because Corey the and them are funny. Like, this nigga was just upset. Oh, you know this nigga, too. Huh? Oh. The, really? the nigga who did this one, you know this nigga for sure because he was at your birthday. So, like. <laughs> That's hilarious. That's hilarious. That is hilarious. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, move on to the next question. Uh, what was your favorite role you played so far? Man.
There, um, my, hmm. okay, so it's probably split between like two or three. Um, one, because I have not had the opportunity to do a ton of like comedic acting, like when it comes to like pro my professional acting career. Most of my stuff is like either drama or network stuff. Um, so the, the comedy short that I did that, like, I'm looking to make it to a feature that was actually really fun because that was, it's not often that I just get to play. There's only like a couple times where I get to like play and improv on set and just like, kind of like find certain stuff within the scenes. Um, so that one for clones, um, there was a movie that I was in called affairs of state. Mm. Half of these scenes ended up getting cut. But some of them were really fun. I played this. Um, it was basically supposed to be like this, this almost like club promoter, record um, producer, owner, you know what I mean? Record label owner type of guy. But like he was like involved in politics because of like his sway on the neighborhood and like the the black community where this politician was trying to get votes. Um, that was a fun role. And it was a state of state of affairs. Was it? Affairs of state. There's a state, sorry. Yeah. Um, awesome. I don't know where it's at. It was on Hulu for a long time. I don't know where it's at now. Mm -hmm. Um, and that was actually cool too, because like it's one of those things where like where you get to work with somebody in Hollywood and then like years later you see like how they grow and like shit gets crazy. So the kid who was the lead in that, he was right out of Juilliard. That was his first feature. And David um, Corns David Cornsweat. That dude is supposed to be the next Superman. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Which is, which is obviously huge. You know what I mean? So it's like crazy uh -huh. to like watch him go from just like, oh, yeah, this is my first movie. Like, nice to meet you, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, yo, nigga, I'm about to be Superman. Like, I'm set for life. Hundreds of millions of yeah. dollars. You know what Man, I mean? Look at you. Look at you. you made the cast list. Look, 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 looking like um, a black Superman yourself. Look at but you. yeah, no, that that was fun. That was actually funny. That's the movie that I got my like my SAG on. Like, that got me into SAG. Um, it was super funny too because like most of the cast, because they shot that one in VA. Most of the cast was from here. Like obviously David. Um, there was another David. I, I want to say Gaines or Bynes. He was on Jag for a while. Um, Thor mm -hmm. Birch, who was in American Beauty with um, uh, old boy who was in the Me Too movement back in the day. Um, but they were all from LA, and I definitely remember them coming over adrian grenier the dude from entourage like it was a lot of big names in that cast um mm -hmm. but they came over and it's like yeah yo when'd you fly out when'd you get here and i'm like oh my god lay down the street you know what i'm saying like so it was it was it was it was a it was a, it was a, it was a dope moment for me it was my first time working with people that i had like seen on television and respected and was like man i want to be like them um so that was a cool moment for me so like I, i'll always remember that moment um clones was fun so i'll just go with those two for now yeah yeah your top four comedians in any order. Oh, come on, man. Um, okay, so I will throw Chappelle. Um, which I feel like, you know, that's that's like commonplace nowadays. Temporary. Yeah, yeah. He's he's putting in great work and he's like still and I feel like he's still in the thick of his like he might we not we might not have seen his best yet. Um Eddie Murphy. Real quick. Eddie Murphy. Okay. His stand up is cool to me. But I really like his acting, man. And what, 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 what? I like the roles. Well, he produces the movies also, but mm -hmm. I, I like the characters that he plays and the range of the character that he's allowed to give. And when I've seen his stand up, I just haven't had anything um, that I could connect with the same did you watch them when they came out because what i will say about comedy like timeliness is important okay and um, i did i did timeliness is important i feel like for a lot of comedy right like because you 
Like you, I think, I think as a comedian, you could definitely go back and like see how brilliant somebody was and, and no matter what time they are. But I feel like if you're just somebody who's like, just, if you're literally just looking to laugh, if you can't, like a lot of that is about relatability, which is why certain people like this comic and why certain people like that comic. Mm -hmm. But like with somebody like Eddie Murphy, I feel like when Raw first came out, that shit was insanely hilarious. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. versus if I showed that to a 17-year-old now, that, that's not going to connect. You know what I mean? If I showed that to a 22-year-old now, that's not going to connect. But, Man, um, Raw better connect or you lost. I'll tell you that. I don't, I don't know if that would connect with college kids right now. Raw, you, you lost? Lost. You gotta watch. You gotta watch it right now, because I promise you that. No, is, I mean, but for me, but, for but it connects for me because I think he's funny, me. bro. I I guarantee you, if I show that to a twenty year old, that's not gonna connect right now. And that's good because you know what? That means he's right on the cusp of learning that lesson himself. I mean, the half conversation. Every man <laughs> needs to have that conversation. If you don't get it, you are lost. That conversation is real. And even Eddie had to apologize for it. And as he said, I was going through something at the time. Guess how old he was? 27. So, yeah, <laughs> he really was going through something. <laughs> yeah, that man. I, I personally feel like Eddie Murphy was at that time. Especially you got um what's his name? Oh, sorry, what um sorry, delirious mm -hmm. raw. Eddie was the the most well rounded comedian. Like he For I don't sure. think there yeah, was yeah. Anything, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think there was anything he could not do. Most comedians you're getting like, let's just and, say if and it's he like, was doing that shit when he was like 20. Like he was yes. so he was so talented so early. Like, this is mm -hmm. like, like people like we, everybody talks about like how Dave was on stage like so early. It's like, yo, Eddie was doing that shit and was like that nigga. Like how Dave is that nigga now. Eddie was that nigga at like 20. Yeah. Yeah. And he checked off boxes that most comedians don't get a chance to uh, to, to check off. Right. Like, like as far example, as the box he was office, considered, people still haven't considered. outsold. Nobody still outsold his special. Yeah. He still got the highest selling yeah. special ever. And most most specials don't even make it to theaters, and it's Ever. even worse now. Most oh. most don't even most don't even make even it to like, streamers. Even uh, Eddie was the first comedic rock star. They didn't have that comedy was always a side act, you know, yeah. known for like you know goofier looking people or whatever. Eddie was the first like attractive comedy celebrity, you know, and he was one of the only black actors in himself too. So, so I think after this is where it gets tricky because this is this is where it kind of gets like subjective and it's like rap because you're starting to talk about legacy and like impact and everything like that. Um, there's plenty of names. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Build a pill. I think has to get thrown in there. Um, you know who I'm talking about? Oh, build a pill. You wow. <laughs> um. <laughs> hey man, we got people like DC Young Fly today. I don't know who oh. May yesterday. I didn't know what you was talking about. The... Damn, why can't I remember his name right now? That's so disrespectful. <laughs> oh, that was um, a good you know one. what I'm talking about? Dick Older... Gregory, George Carlin. Carlin. Um, like, that's what I'm saying. You have people like that who I feel like impact. You have to respect that. And then I think you have people who are just, like, funny. And you have to, like, say how you feel about them. Um, having the seen Fox. some... What's up? The Fox. Red Jamie Fox? Fox, Red Fox. Oh, Red, Red Fox. Fox. I mean, hey, he, no, I, I think I think he he deserves to be in the conversation. That's one of those where it's like <clears throat> I haven't watched enough of him, okay, to like feel it. But I have watched enough of him to see his influence in other comics for sure. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But I do think if I was 15 years older, Red Fox would be one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. Hearing he's fucking hilarious. He's still fucking. He he's fucking hilarious. Like I go back and watch fucking. You know what I'm saying? Like Harlem Nights and shit. That nigga's the funniest nigga in there. He's in there for five minutes. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, so, like, you get that. I have underrated people who I feel like have put in, like, great bodies of work. I think Bill Burr is, like, super dope, man. I, I know I know that's, like, most comedians are like, nigga, what are you talking about? Nah, oh, he's, oh, one he's, like, if he's, no, he's, if, he's one of my favorites. He's one of my Like, I've never heard him be put in people's top four, though. He's um, a top white comedian, for sure. And he's a yeah, like. Like, there's I, no... I, there's no Body bigger than him um, as far as white comedians go right now. Uh what 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 about what's his face? Um, um so Segura. Either Segura, Segura or Nah. Bigger than Bill Burr? Absolutely not. I don't know, man. Segura, Segura just like left Hollywood, made his own site, started touring himself, man. That that says a that, lot, bro. That's great. Hollywood gotta accept you for you to be one of the biggest. I mean, come on, man. 
I guess that's true. Uh, I yeah, know. I mean, come on. You you just okay. said it. He's well, I like outside. I like Bill Burr, and then um, man, I don't know who I would give my fourth one to right now, bro. I'm gonna go with those three for now. My fourth, my fourth, my fourth Mount Rushmore place is gonna take me too long to come up with that answer for y'all. Because there's like a lot of names that I would like want to put, and like I said, there's different things that is is making me go up there. So you could you could put one you could put one of those like those goats up there. Y'all niggas don't cancel me because I said Bill Cosby. That nigga did a lot for comedy. He said mm. Bill the Pill, boy. Bill the Pill. I was <laughs> like, Who? That made my dude say, man. Jeremy already I'm knows, good. man. Listen, I'm gonna say it out here. This is the first place I said this. Do a biopic about this nigga. You said what? Say again. You gonna do it? Oh, my, I want to. I want to do a biopic about him, but yeah, I I gotta true. figure out how to make the movie work because he is a fucking super villain in like the world's eyes right now. So it's like I gotta figure out how there would be a way for like it, it would be hard to go into a movie like that rooting for that nigga knowing how it ends. No, man, you gotta do just like um, was it Dave Chappelle already said it? You know what I'm saying? He said, "What if it's a hero that he." He he, he R words. I think that would be that's bad for you too. Oh, uh, he R words, but he saves. He R oh, word, but he saves. Man. And oh. everyone has a tragedy thing. <laughs> You're like, making me uh, cringe Ray right Charles. now saying it. It's, it's, you know, I'm you just didn't saying. Even, you don't even want to say the word rape because you know that sentence. No, no, no. Crazy. You can't say it on YouTube. It's YouTube, YouTube, YouTube. Oh my bad, YouTube, my bad. YouTube. It's all good. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> rape. <laughs> them break up them leaves, boy. <laughs> break up them leaves. leaves. But uh. Yeah, um, hey, that just threw me off. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. It was saying uh, like Ray Charles, you know, he had the heroin addiction and he beat women, but you know that's different because like, it's you're not doing anything no. to anybody else. Oh, I, I he beat women, he beat they didn't them. show that in the movie, they did. Who they show him right. beating in the movie? The, um, oh, uh, Regina King, he like he that's put his movie. hands on her one time and that was it. Th- the, 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 the most we've seen most somebody segue. get beat up in the movie was. I can Tina. I can Tina. I can Tina. It. But that but that wasn't his movie. But that was because niggas is what I'm saying. Is that that's my point. He's the villain yeah. in that movie. But I'm saying that all you have to do is have that sympathetic thing where you talk about all the good things he do, and then you have to have him sorrowful, even though if it probably wasn't true, but have him be sorrowful about what he did. Like, man, I I just can't stop. I'd have a terrible Cosby. I, I can't. I literally <laughs> I, I do so many impressions. No, you I do, you do, do you do have to make him like an addict. You do have to make him like an I addict. Just, but I just can't help. I, I just I just don't I'm know so how to translate that story. It's, 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 there's there's two things, right? I would want him to be comfortable with it, and he's clearly not ever gonna be okay oh, with that. Never. Yeah. Nothing, so it's just like, do to but him. like he would have to be comfortable <laughs> with it because I feel like I had to show him for what he is. Um, I think people love flawed characters, but again, I think it would be one of those situations where women specifically are not once going to want to support that. I I think it's there's, there's a there's a there's a there's a a fan base for it. I think there's some people because anytime I see him come up in the comments, people be going hard. They be like, you know, they be like, you know, he did nothing wrong. I'll be like, if he wins, that's, that's a little crazy. That's a little crazy. <laughs> like people, we niggas always gotta overdo it, right? Like I know people still going wild for R. Kelly, and I'm like, bro, they sure we watched the video. We literally watched the video. And niggas is still like, he ain't do nothing wrong. I'm like, come on. What are we talking about? <laughs> yeah, man. When, when niggas like, when niggas like, bro, it's so funny. Because, and again, this is a grain of salt, everybody. I yeah. think that Mike Tyson is a supremely interesting person. I think Uh-oh. the growth All that, right. hold on, hold on, listen. The growth that he has made as a person is interesting to me. I think listening to him speak is super interesting. I do not think that he was a great person, right? The nigga wrote in a book when he hit Robin Gibbons, he was like, that's the best punch I ever threw, right? He said that. But there are niggas right now who are like, he never did that wrong to that girl. I'm like, bro, like there's, there's, Fat Joe is, is, is done a podcast talking about when that nigga was trying to buy Remy Ma from him. He was like, yo, just leave her here. I give you, I give you the Mercedes. Like he was just like, so it's like you can't think he's that, and at the same time think that he would never put his hands on the jump. You know what I mean? Like so. Anyway, you know, um, for Thanksgiving, um, Thanksgiving two years ago, you know, we had people over, and you know, Mike that Tyson was, the house? No, I, I would never. Uh, <laughs> you scared? What do you do, right? Because yeah. if Mike Tyson grabbed your girl ass, well, you hold gotta your, shoot him. Hold, hold your ears. That's it, bro. I'm trying. You <laughs> like, get, yo, don't. <laughs> like no, the food right there. The the food, what do you do, right? right, right? Like, like if Mike Tyson, if Mike Tyson come in the house right now and grab your girl ass, what do you do? 
I'd be like, Mike, I'm pretty sure you have warrants. Uh, officer. <laughs> Mike Tyson's in my house. I you know how you, celebrity bro. works? Cops gonna get there be like, oh, it's Mike Tyson. Hey, you take a picture of seven. <laughs> Love your work. <laughs> Play. Hey, nothing's gonna happen. Um, but yeah, that was literally the conversation that ended. You know how everybody eats and they chill and we started playing games and it was all right. fun. And I don't know what happened because, you know, I'll be tending to so many people. I just remember I came back and it was like, you know, that B was lying. It's like, yeah, all right. It's been a good night. You know, everybody. Uh, For who? Everybody, wait, wait. You know, which, who was she? Who was the person? Robin Givens. Robin Givens. Oh, and, uh, that happened dude, to us two nights that. ago. Like, so my girl is adamant, right? She's like, nigga, no, he it's in a book that he hit her. And he, like, she's going off. And I'm like, listen, I do think that yeah. Robin Givens threw some sauce on her stories. Yeah, right. She's, she's I but think like, she was I don't manipulator. like, but do I think that he I used to be in the camp to where I thought Robin Givens was lying. Right. And I do understand Robin Givens had Brad Pitt in the house. She had all kinds of niggas in the house. She was wilding. Right. I understand that. But do I think Mike Tyson is incapable of doing any of that stuff? No, I do not. Because of the other stories that I've heard about Mike Tyson. I have heard that like, oh. and, and that's one of the bad things about the podcast world now too, is like, now I don't, like I have a story with Jeremy. That shit's going to come out at some point. Cause I'm going to get on a podcast and tell that shit. Oh yeah, nigga, I'm telling all your shit. I'm going to wait though. I'm going to wait though. Mm. Like now, right mm. now, this shit ain't hurting Mike Tyson. Niggas don't even know. Niggas don't even care. Listen, there's stories about Mike Tyson going to people's parties and like, yo, like all the women getting mad and everything like that. Nobody's doing that. <laughs> like, come over and like a nigga has to go up to Mike, the dude who's the owner of the house. He's like, hey, yo, Mike, yo, these are people's wives, yo. You can't just be grabbing. You can't just be grabbing on them. That nigga, he does what he wants to do. What do you do? People I know who have been in rooms where they're like, yo, like when he was in his prime, they're like, yo, it feels like being in a room with a lion. Like you yeah, just, yeah, hope, yeah. you just hope the lion doesn't get mad. That's what. Yeah. What it, I mean, if you let him talk long enough, he'll tell himself you don't need. He he literally doesn't hold back on his own opinion. That's why him. I appreciate him because I'm just like, yeah. I, if it's one thing I say about that nigga, he's honest. Yeah, he's definitely honest. He 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 literally would say exactly what he do and why what what made him do what he did. Which most people don't have that level of accountability. He'll say, yeah. "This is what they did. This is how it made me feel, and this is why I act the way I acted." And I'm not sorry. That's that's my Tyson in that show. Um, but yeah, um, I do believe Robin Givens was, you know, slightly manipulative. And I don't think I don't think that he was throwing uh, the sauce on there for sure. Yeah, I don't think that Mike Tyson, who wasn't, you know, he's a lot smarter than he was when he was younger. I think, you know, that frustration, you know, he would react physically. And that's what he did. And yeah, it was like this because I was even kind of with him a little bit, kind of like you were saying, like I was like, you know, it was like man, Robin Gibbs was like playing him, like, yeah, she was playing him, this is that until he was like, Yeah, he did nothing. And then I was like. Now I'm not gonna take Mike Tyson's side now. You you're going too far. You're going too far. I'm I'm just saying on her own accord, she seems a little, you know. Um, you know, Michael, um, I don't know why he acts the way he acts. Um, you know, I had my mother sit down and talk to him, and you know, it just seems a little like yeah, yeah. I always go with Adam's family, Adam's family, um, Uncle Fester and his wife, you know, when she was like, she was like, Oh, Fester doesn't want to talk to you guys anymore. It's like, what? Right. Fester, that's my guy. That's what I feel like was going that's on. That's really. funny. Not an Adams family drop. That's wild. Well, well, I mean, you know, I remember I'm, I'm that part of the movie. Hey, listen, you got it. I I seen the movie. I know. Um, social media goals. And she was trying to kill that nigga. Crazy. Yeah. Social media goals. And do you have hard. any? Do how does it affect your career? Is that something you want, or are you the type of person that let's say you get everything? Do you throw your social media away or do you use it to promote yourself more like Will Smith? Man, I think it would be easier to do if I had a situation like Will Smith where I had a team who could just make content around me while I'm doing shit because I don't enjoy making social media content. I do think that I need to do a better job at it. Um, I just I really need to do a better job at it. Like, I have friends who make skits, and they're like, yo, you would be real good at skits. You should make skits every time you do something that's funny. But I just don't – it doesn't, like – it doesn't excite me to do that stuff. Um, and I do think I've missed some opportunity by not jumping in that lane, for sure. So, I mean, for the goals, I would just say, like, finding a way to get to a point to where it's really working for me. 
Um, if I can do that, then I'll be happy. Like, so I don't necessarily have a follower goal or any of that, but to a point to where my social media is working for me and promoting my life and making me money, that that is a goal. Because right now I'm kind of just on that shit. Like, and I'm one of those people, like I'll not post for months because I don't love it. You know what I mean? But I really need to find a way to make social media work for me for sure. Yeah, um, I will say that um, I remember specifically you um, hopping on the, the scooter with the do rag with the forty, I thought that was hilarious, sir. I, I would watch a series of that. So, dog, so many people told me that the nigga who shot it was like, "Yo, let's just keep doing it," and I'm like, "Cool, if I feel like it." So, I mean, maybe, you know what? I'll do another one this year. It's decided. There it is. It's decided. I'll do another one this year. Hmm. Now I gotta find. But the thing is, now you have to keep pushing the dumb shit, right? Like riding around on the scooter with the forty is not good enough. Now, now I gotta ride it through traffic, or I gotta ride it off a ramp. Or, or I gotta, or I gotta, or I gotta put a, a homeless person on the back with me. You know what I mean? You, you have to, and that's the thing where you have to keep pushing the envelope with that silly ass shit. But, um, but that was fun though. That was actually fun. Like uh, sometimes I have fun with it, and it's been a minute. So yeah, like maybe maybe I'll turn that into a character and just keep doing like skits with it. But then he has to talk. Then I have to write shit. Then I have to make sure it's funny. You know what I mean? So we'll see. But I do respect the fuck out of those people. You know what I mean? Like um, I know Minx. Shout out to Minx. Um, I, you know, I've met a couple of the other niggas who are like doing great with like their uh, social media comedy. And that shit's hilarious. I respect the fuck out of them because it's it's a lot more work than people think that it is. Um, because it's it's legit work. It's legit work. Don't don't think mm -hmm. that they're not putting work in. That is that is a job. Mm -hmm. Wow. And I forgot all about the uh the the Christmas do rag. That was funny. I'm gonna lie. Yeah. So. Nah, man, I appreciate everything, Nate. Man, we're about to wrap it up with the last one. Um, okay. It's a, a question I probably asked you before, but we're in a different space, a different place. Okay. So um, you being in the mix right now, um, uh, I don't, or and, and I haven't really attended many festivals right now we're, we're in a festival culture sure. um even when it comes to comedy it's like everything is on overload like everything is on overload you don't you know you have you have sprinkled in some smaller things but the culture right now is really to just cram a whole bunch of superstar stuff together and, and everything is just like snap crackle and pop um coming out of um covid lockdown to right now everything is wide open you have you know at least i don't care where you live there's a major festival going on where you got about 10 acts you know they're like 150 bucks 200 bucks and you get to see like all these superstars you have these comedy shows not necessarily not so much in comedy you don't have like superstar tours but you know the comedians are out there doing arenas now like you know and, and, I, and I don't mm -hmm. say arenas like comedians have never done arenas. I'm saying they're doing arenas where Jeremy was having to sneak off and do shows <laughs> when it wasn't popular to do shows mm -hmm. in order to like get his thing, you know, to to to, to do his craft, to hone his craft. Mm -hmm. um, where do you see the progression going in the next two years? Oof. For comedy specifically or just like festival culture? Just culture, period. Just, just how people, just the social, social progression. Right now, I would say, unless something like bad happens with it, that's the wave. That's gonna be the wave for a while. Um, mm -hmm. I feel like the festival culture really came from white culture, uh, white party culture, um, and. I mean, essentially, like to me, festivals like grew out of like it's just a concert, but like they just provided more room for like extracurricular shit, floats and and like people dancing crazy. It, it just it just it just amped up a concert, right? Make it faded. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Get out there, get high, people rolling, people drunk, you know what I'm saying? I'm wearing drawers on my head, whatever. But I think it was bred out of like people wanting to breed be free and have fun and right now i feel like that is probably the most free people are um being a little bit older i remember 
like, because I've always been like, I, I used to love to party, go to clubs, like I was that, right? So like, I, I'm, I'm old enough to go through that era of like the mid 2000s partying, and the two, the early 2010s partying. That's a completely different scene from going out right now, right? Mm-hmm. Especially like for Black people, like we don't really party. We're like we're too cool to dance. It's all about the social media shit. Like the festival stuff, I feel like is the only place right now where people literally aren't worried about being cool. They're literally mm-hmm. just there for the fun. And so mm-hmm. because people saw that, people are trying to replicate that in every phase of entertainment they can. Black people saw all those big white international DJs making that money, and they're like, oh, I can throw a festival. I can do the same thing, right? Like, I have fans. Let me go get my fans and just do a festival. So, right? So then you have Camp Flog now, right? You have the Dreamville Fest. You have you have us doing festivals now, right? And then after that, it's like the comedy people are like, oh, shit, well, let's throw a festival. Let's just put us all in the same place and we make all the money, right? Instead of one person doing the show, if I'm a promoter, I'm like, okay, I can bring in Jeremy, right? And I can command $100 per ticket um, for one day and do two shows, three shows, right? I'm like, okay, cool. Well, if I get Jeremy, I get Greg, I get uh fucking Chappelle and whoever else is in the third not do a whole weekend and then niggas pay for days or they could pay for one ticket for the whole thing and now with somebody where I might have gotten 100 to 200 dollars out of them I have the potential to get a thousand dollars out of them or 500 dollars out of them so it makes sense money wise too as long as you can make it work logistically so I think it's really just I think it's the progression of business and economics and people realizing what has been the most fun for the consumer um Mm -hmm. Like, my friends who go to festivals, they have a ball, bro. They have a fucking ball. The people who go to Beyonce concerts, they have a ball. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it, it's like, I don't, I don't like. Not who, complaining who's, who's about your, Who's your price. favorite rapper? Who's, whose concert would you go to right now? Who's your favorite rapper, Greg? Oh, man, I'm jaded, man. I'm jaded. Who would Give me I your go top two. I don't even want to make this hard. Give me your top three. Top three. All right. If I can have a top three. I would say Rakim, okay, mm. E forty, okay, okay, that's a good concert, so far. And we'll say sure, E forty shit gonna be lit. That that's I'm definitely going to E forty set. You know what? I'm gonna throw a wild card. He's not one of my favorite dudes, but he would be dope in that mix. And I think it would be like if I had a budget, Rakim E forty and Nas. Hey, you already know. I, I think that would be ridiculous. I, I think I think I think, that, I, think okay. I think that is dope to like listen to. I think for your entertainment value and like people dancing, you've got one of those artists who his set is going to be crazy, and he's not the best rapper <laughs> of the group. <laughs> yeah, he is. And see, and that's what that's I think right. people are capitalizing on when it comes to festival life. It's like, okay, where where do I have cool. the fun? I what heard what you're saying though. E forty definitely is going to have go to more party, the party. of the party. Yeah, the, the drinking. Oh, we going up. We going up, and that's and that's what I want to happen, right? And I want people to have a good time. And it's like, unfortunately, you know, a lot of our stuff, like you, you know, what I'm saying, you saw the hood clubs, but the big clubs, it's all section games out here now. Like I remember when I first got to LA, like they don't even have dance floors in like the big clubs out here now. It's literally all sections. Mm-hmm. You go to highlight room, all sections. You go to Warwick, it's all sections. You, 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 you know what I'm saying? Like, I remember when I first got here, One Oak was popping, right? That shit died over the pandemic. Mm-hmm. These have a mm-hmm. dance floor and shit like that. Um, Nightingale used to go up back then sometimes. Nightingale still goes up. There's no dance floor in Nightingale anymore. It's all sections. Mm-hmm. A festival is all dance floor. The whole fucking thing is just thousands of people mm-hmm. go out there, get fucked up, and have a good time. And like people do that, they respect that. You don't really hear, you don't hear about festival shootings. You don't, you know what I mean? Like they're really controlling it in a way to where it's like chill and it's fun and it's not so pretentious. I think that's what they're capitalizing on is just trying to find people, find find a way to people make people loosen up and have a good time. In defense of Nas, I see him headline Governor's Ball and people were dancing. All right, I'm I I I I'm believe done, it. Done, I done, believe done, it. Done, yep. Done. Moving on. Moving on. Yeah, man. <laughs> I've seen so many people Harlem Shake the Nas shit. It's crazy. fuck out of here man the nigga can rap get get out of here like that's it (laughs)
You know, I saw Andre 3000. He's going to be doing festivals. He's going to do a two hour flute solo performance. Bro, I, yeah, <laughs> you you want to talk crazy right now? If we was going to throw a festival and I said Andre 3K was for the headline, I guarantee I outsell your shit. I guarantee Yo, I outsell your shit. It, it, it outsell, but he going to be. It's gonna It'll outsell your shit. If I can actually get that nigga to come, he's outselling Nas. It's gonna break easily. the record for. It's gonna break the record for most refunds requested. That's nah, what's gonna happen. Nah, if They're I can actually be. get him to come, like I said, yo, if I can yo. get him to come, easily outselling Nas. Do a do a do a Andre three thousand Frank Ocean concert and watch that niggas. Watch them niggas plummet they stock. Niggas niggas gonna dance to one mic. <laughs> they, their agents are going to commit suicide. That's what's going to happen. They're going to be like, what did we do? <laughs> Y'all be, nah, two biggest artists on the planet. Listen. No music played. <laughs> Listen. They both, they both. I can't say they're showing up at a festival right now that they, they going to sell that day out within the first 10 minutes. Man, and, and, and Andre 3000 is going to show up late like Lauren Hill and Big Boy are going to be like, I can't perform this. I can't perform uh, uh, this. Why does he show up? As long as you show up, these niggas still buying tickets for Frank Ocean, and he made one album, one and a half, a half, one and a half album and a half. Yeah, so <laughs> it was a good album. Yeah. Best song on there had Andre Three K on it. Oh man, I could do this with y'all day. Nah, man, that's that's been dope. So what's up, Nate? What you got coming out? What you got coming up? What can we look forward to? Man, next year, I mean, I got a, I got a bunch of stuff that I'm working on next year. Like I said, my short film that I got done, I really would like to shoot that as a feature next year. So I'm working on that script. I got people waiting on that, trying to get that off the ground. Um, and really, I don't know, man. The strike shut down a lot of shit. So, like, I'm just regrouping, trying to figure out what the next steps are. Right now, that's the main focus. There's some other things that I got my hands in that I, I can't really speak on just yet. Okay. You know what I mean? Talking about things before they're ready and vice demons. So you got to, you know, chill. But, um. You know, I'm 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 always working. Jeremy already knows I'm already, I'm always you know beneath the surface. Yeah, the legs are always kicking. If people want to spin the record back, uh, where would you like for them to start? Spin Figuring the out record. Uh huh. Yeah. So if people wanted to look at your career and wanted to go back and kind of get a glimpse of who Nate Walker is, where would you tell them to start? Like, what's a good a good uh a good space? Man, coincidentally, because I don't love the space, it's probably Instagram. Um, I feel like that has been a good, like, because I haven't really deleted any of my stuff. Actually, I probably need to because I'm going to be in trouble for some shit for sure at some point. Somebody's going to look back and like, how could you make this joke? You know what I mean? But um, like that, that like right now, that shit is it has everything up there like there's been certain things that have been deleted but it has like my life before i started acting and you can see like my first things and then like you and like i've been pretty good about like throwing clips like when i'm on a show like a clip here a clip there and then you can go out you can go find that show if you want to this show if you want to you can look at the imdb see what i've been in and go find those movies um but like if you just kind of like scroll through the instagram you'll you'll see where i've been when i got on this show when i got on that show when i got this movie um when something big happened um most of that stuff is up there so i feel like right now that's a good space um yeah like because i mean right now it's just really a, a lot of it is like you know small spots on big tv okay. shows so like until i get to my one to where it's like okay boom this made me everything you kind of like i'm still on that journey I don't, I don't think it's time to look back yet I, I think you you'd have a better it'd be better for you to just like watch me and see where I go than looking back because it's not enough back there for me yet. Like I think I'm I think I'm at the very I think I'm at the very beginning of whatever it is I'm about to be. That's dope. That's dope. And you, Jeremy, what's up with you? What you got coming up when you hitting the stage next? Uh yeah. So uh, uh tomorrow I'll be a uh, Quake House uh radio, Sirius XM LL Network. Um where I'll be promoting Splendid Radio. Uh, <laughs> let's see how we do. Saturday I'll be at Ha Ha Comedy Club. Uh, that's yeah, the 18th. Um, I just got word of that while we were doing this. Um, other than that, I probably won't be doing much uh, this November. Um, but if you want to, I'll start promoting December early. Uh, on the second, I'll, on December second, I'll be at the LA Convention Center uh, for a special show, Fictional Roast. Um, let me see. Can we know who's getting roasted? Yeah, it's a uh, it's called a it's a '90s it's fictional roast. It's like um, oh. '90s characters or whatever. And I just got word I'll be playing Urkel. So 
Yeah, you're playing who? The LA, Urkel. Steve Urkel. Ah, I'll be here. They should have made me play Urkel. You could have just like spoke for me. Uh come you could be you could be Waldo. Come come through. Yeah. Waldo Harado Faldo. That's this is you, bro. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we're doing the fictional roast in the second. Uh what are we doing? The third. Uh I think it's a comedy store, seventh comedy store. I got two shows at the comedy store on the seventh, Mar Vista on the ninth, Hollywood Enterprise on the tenth. Uh more to come. Yeah, anyway, that's it. Yeah. One quick thing. This year is almost over, man. This year is almost man. over. This is man. very true. This man, it's year over, bro. It's over. Like, yeah. Yeah. yeah, man. Like everything I'm trying to get done now is trying to like set shit up for next year. Like this year, Same thing. it's in the it's in the it's in the can, bro. Man, well, no, I feel man. like once you get to the holidays, you're really just planning out how you're gonna do your holidays. Mm-hmm. Like, okay, I need I need to make sure I see family. If I haven't seen family, I need to see my mom. You know what I mean? Where am I eating turkey? That type of shit. Like it's it, it turns into that for like from from now until the end of the year. That's what it turns into. And then you're like, what am I gonna do for New Year's? If I'm doing anything for New Year's, and then then it's back to the grind. This year is over. Mm-hmm. Man, well, no, nah, man. With that being said, I want to thank you, uh, Nate, once again, man. This well, anytime, been a cool man. One. Mr. Scipio, been another cool one. And with that being said, yep. thank you for watching Splendid Radio on Farside TV.